All right. So thank you again uh, for the kind invitation, uh, Dr. Park, Dr. Mintz, and the entire committee of uh, DCTAP. It's a, always a pleasure and a privilege for me to be here with you today. I have with me uh, our team here from uh, Korea who will be discussing the case that we have and share some thoughts with you with Gary at the helm on the IVIS and try to make decisions according to what we hear clinically as well as uh, from the IVIS. Could you please uh, start with the case presentation? Okay, uh, this is Dr. Ho from the Kaming University, Daegu, South Korea. Uh, I would like to introduce the brief uh, case summary. Uh, this uh, patient is a 62 years old female was referred to our hospital with effort chest pain for three months. Her coronary risk factor was known. The baseline ECG showed the left bundle branch block. The solume spect shows reversible large sized perfusion defect in array territory. The echocardiogram shows normal uh, LB function without a regional world motion abnormality. Uh, Dr. Morris uh, explained the coronary angiogram, right? Thank you very much. So, let's, so basically, to summarize, 60-year-old lady with very little risk factors and the following angiogram. Could we show the angiogram, please, the first picture? We could take the slides off and uh, go ahead with the first picture. All right. So I don't know who is, but I heard Neil is there. Maybe uh, could, you, could you see this picture? Yes, we can see it. Perfect. So this is uh, what we were facing with uh, a left main, uh, high-grade stenosis, in a way a bifurcational disease that involves the left main distal and osteal LAD with what appears to be on this very steep LAO caudal that appears to have a significant high-grade stenosis of the origin of the circumflex. Had it not been for this view, uh, one of the approaches that we were going to consider is a crossover stent from the left main into the LAD with the consideration of the significant difference in size between the left main and the LAD and we were going to assess it by IVIS and then tailor the stent accordingly. But with this significant stenosis of the circumflex, at least angiographically, we called immediately for help and uh, Dr. Mintz was here, so what we did next before... Well, just hold on, we have a, we have an, a noise uh, of someone else who's speaking and giving some comments but we do not want to hear. Could we shut off the, the lateral noise, the contralateral noise, noise, please? Yeah, this noise. What's that? Now, we're, we're getting two audio feeds at once here. We get, we get comments or from two rooms, so it's, it's... Very annoying, I'm sure. Or, but Maurice, it gives us time to think about your lesion here. Right, so maybe we can ask the audio to shut okay, off from the other room. <laughs> can you hear it still? Now we are listening to the other room, huh? <laughs> okay, Maurice, uh, maybe uh, you continue. Maybe the uh, technical staff can fix the problem that we get okay, so for noise from two rooms. Perfect. So we need no, to we get it only from this room, please, the audio. Yeah, yeah. We see you, we hear you, but we also hear the others. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so uh, what we see right here is two wires one in the LED and one in the circumflex, and we decided to wire the epicardial branch of the circumflex because it is a branching vessel. Maybe we can go back to one, and you can see there is two branches, one in the AV groove of the circumflex and one in the obtuse marginal, and intentionally we put the wire into the epicardial obtuse marginal rather than AV groove circumflex since there was not much muscle coming down distally. But we knew that we had the option of a third wire if we wanted to and hence we chose an 8 French guiding catheter for all this. So with the wire in place maybe we can ask Gary to tell us what he has. Sure, so the image just from the circumflex. Could, yeah. we, could, we, could we go to the IVIS? Yeah. Not yet, we still have the angiogram right now, yes. So, if it's just from a certain flex on the tumor view, this cross-sectional view, we're going to basically concentrate just on the cross-sectional 
Gary, Gary, we cannot hear you. You cannot hear me. Well, that's not good. We cannot listen your voice, Gary. Can you hear anything at all? Yes, sir. Now it's okay. Now it's okay. All right. So we're imaging just the circumflex, longitudinal view, cross-sectional view. The first thing you see is that at this point, the circumflex is not very big, or I should say the, AV, the um, up, high obtuse marginal uh, diagonal um, ramus branch, whatever you want to call it. It's about two and a half millimeters, and it's not diseased. Now, as we get more proximal, the first landmark you'll see is here. This is this AV groove circ. And then as we get a little more proximal, we get to the true ostium of the circumflex right here, where the lumen area is about 2.7 square millimeters with a plaque burden of 72%. You see some eccentric calcification. This is the... LAD wire coming in, so you'll notice that this is a very short but pretty significant uh, uh, stenosis at the ostium with a large black burden. I won't say whether it's ischemic producing at this point, but at least from the standpoint of an interventional study, um, it's not a trivial amount of plaque. So we measured also, you told me about a minimal luminal area of? About 2.7 at the ostium of the circ with a plaque burden of about 70 to 75 percent. Okay. Now we're getting into the distal left main. The distal left main itself is not super tight. I mean, to my eye, the angiogram looks more like a biosteal stenosis, but the lumen area is three and a half square millimeters, which by all criteria is significant. And then, sorry, and then we get, we get more proximal, and we're into now the left main. Um, and you can see that the left main is, is, again, not huge. It's about three and a half millimeters. Um, and then the disease ends before you get to the ostium. Right. So when you told me the disease ended, I took an angiogram, and it, it looked like it was literally in the middle of the left main. Right. So now we have the anatomy uh, determined by angiographically and more precisely with the uh, IVs. <coughs> And therefore, we decided that leaving the circumflex alone and doing a crossover was not good enough at 2.7 millimeter, millimeter squared area. So uh, with uh, semi-consensus, we went ahead and decided to do uh, perhaps two stents rather than a single stent crossover. So go ahead and uh, next picture. So at this point in time, would, uh, would the panelists agree to two stents or uh, still there are people who are more interested in single stand. Now you can ask the, um, from right to left, who, who would go for two stands or who would go for one stand? Could you probably comment? Two stand. Two stand. Okay. Perfect. And Nicholas? Two stand. Me too. Two. Two stands. Yes. All right. So. Two stands. So everybody agrees with your Fantastic. Um, strategy. I can tell you that in 10 years of doing this, uh, this is the first time I have had concordance with the panelists regarding two stents. Usually everybody yeah, wants... I'm going to get it better. Yeah, exactly. So uh, this is what we chose. We chose to put a 2.5 by uh, 12 Promise Premier in the circumflex. But before we go there, what kind of uh, bifurcational so-called uh, technique will we be using? So I will tell you a little bit, and we can debate. We chose to do a mini crush, which consists of, as you know, placement of the circumflex, and the next placement of the LED stent. And you can see here uh, the LED stent coming in, 3 millimeter by 16 promise premier. Next. And then pulling back a little bit in position, the circumflex, maintaining position of the LED, pulling it back to where the disease stopped on IVIS. And now we have what we think is ideal position. Next, please. And therefore, right there, after confirming it several times, we went ahead and uh, the patient was having a lot of symptoms. We had to go a little bit faster. So we went ahead and inflated the circumflex first, leaving the LED in place. And you could see that there was a little improvement, at least angiographically, of the true ostium of the circumflex. Would you agree? Yeah. 
Maurice, I have a question. You, you not intentionally try to cover the whole left main until it's Exa still the exactly. original. I usually try to, but in this particular case, first it was a very long left main, as you could tell, but also by Ivis, the disease clearly stopped where you see. There was nothing proximal, at least as we can tell by Ivis. So, Maurice, you didn't show us that. Did you prepare these lesions? No. Primary stenting. And in a young person, and having the benefit of IVIS, as you saw, there was a single arc of calcium with no significant shadowing. So that helped me in my decision about primary stenting, if I could get away with it. So if you are in agreement with where we are so far, let's go next. We went ahead and then inflated the LED left main. And you can see that there is a, an improvement of the lumen without much impairment of the circumflex. So as usual, this is what the easy part of it is to do a mini crush. The more complicated part is then to wire again and be able to do the final kiss because as the literature had taught us and experienced that we need to finish with a final kiss. So let's go back, please. So now we, were, uh, we needed to recross, and that took a little bit of uh, doing, and we were able to, uh, fortunately, using a Fielder XT. They did not have my favorite wire, which is a more stiff hydrophilic, which uh, I use in this particular condition. And the high stiff hydrophilic they did not have, so we used the Fielder XT, finally found where we needed to be. And as you see here, we pre-dilated with a 1.5 millimeter balloon, the stent struts. So, uh, uh, just one question. You, you, you pulled the first wire before inflating the second stent, did no, you? No, I left it in place. And you are not afraid of getting metal to me on metal yes. and, and uh, compress it? That's a very good point. So what I do is as I inflate, I pull on it. And as soon as I feel that there is now getting stuck, I stop inflating and pull it completely. <laughs> or I inflate completely with it still moving. This is my kind of poor man's test of getting jailed. So uh, you see here, you see the two wires in the circumflex? Yeah, so that's what I did. So I pulled on one until I found that it was not being caught. So 1.5 millimeter balloon usually doesn't get you caught. Then we put a 2.5 millimeter next and dilated the left main, the circumflex and finally dilated the LED left main with a 3.5 millimeter balloon, as Gary told us the diameter was of the left main. So we're right here, and we have now uh, the wire in the LED, I'm sorry, the, the balloon in the LED, and we can go live, and we have a 2.5 millimeter circumflex non-compliant balloon to try to go into the circumflex and finish the final kiss. If that goes, that is. Who else on the panel would leave the, the first way in place? Um, I, I would. You would? Can I have I the 2.5 emerge? 2.5 emerge balloon, you say. Okay. Oh, That's okay, it. Okay, hold on, hold on. We don't need it. Yeah, okay, go ahead now. One second, one second. That's the circumflex. Yeah. This is This is the circumflex okay. wire. And this is the LED wire we yeah. dilated already. So let's go ahead and dilate the circumflex. Yeah. Circumflex. Two. Two. Four, six. Four, six. Eight, ten, twelve. Eight, ten, twelve. Fourteen. I'm going to pull it back a little bit. So what, what size of balloon is that? 2.5. That's what Gary kept on saying, that we need to be careful with that. So now we're going to do a summation, and we could do both. Two uh, together. Yeah. Two, 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 four, six. Four, six. Two, four, six. Six. Seven. Seven. Eight. Eight. eight, eight ten. Twelve. Yeah. Fourteen. Fourteen. Sixteen. Down. Sixteen. Down. Okay, so this is our kiss. I'm going to try to come back now with the LED. If you can hold the top one, please.
and then we'll come back with the circumflex, do a final, and see what we have. And uh, maybe what we'll do is, as you go to Dr. Makar, we will do an IVIS and then complete the procedure with IVIS surveillance of both. So can I have the, let's hold the wire here, please. Sure. Let's take the circumflex balloon out. And we'll do a final injection or an injection before it's called final. Okay, you can let go, please. And uh, let's be ready to do that. Yes, ready. Inject. Excellent. So the left main looks good. Let's go a little card, please. So, so far, so good. And uh, what I wanted to do this view is to show you that the distal LED is now uh, tapered and covered nicely. There is an aneurysmal section there was in the ostium of the LED, but distal to the stent, there doesn't seem to be any uh, angiographic, at least, dissections, even though we went with a 3-0 there. Inject. Okay, perfect. So that's where we are right now. And I think that uh, what we have right now is pretty acceptable. All three vessels are permeable. They're all patent, including the AV groove. It doesn't look to be very disturbed. So uh, maybe what we have to do right now is to, uh, I don't know if they're ready in the next room, but if you have any questions, please let's go ahead and discuss, and otherwise we're going to get ready to do the final IBIS. So we can notice there are some hazards over the ostium of the circumstance. Okay. Is this yes. anything there? Uh, I think no. it is just mm -hmm. probably not. We, that's why we want to do the IVIS. And if there is, yeah. we will go ahead and post dilate. As a matter of fact, what I want to do is a 2.75 now. Do you have an emerge 2.75 short? And I'm going to dilate that before I do the IVIS. 275 okay, by Maurice, 12. Um, uh, 12, not Maurice, have we, I think you, you, you have done your job almost completely. And we would like to go to the switch the room. The switch room. Congratulations for a wonderful, <laughs> complex procedure done very quickly and, and in a nice manner. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank um, you very much for your time. Bye. Bye-bye. We'd like to switch to the room of Dr. Makar. That's uh, the, <coughs> the NC one, not the most. Yeah, hello, can you uh, see us? Hi. Hi, can you Hi. see Good us? Good afternoon. And... Good afternoon, can you uh, see uh, us? Yeah. Can you hear us? Yes, we can see us, we can see you, we can hear you. Terrific. Uh, so uh, I'm Raj Makar. With me is uh, Professor Santoso and Dr. An, and uh, we'd like to go ahead and yeah. present. Oh, uh, we'd like to go ahead and present the case. Can we go ahead and uh, sure. uh, do so? So, uh, so this is a 66-year-old uh, gentleman who was treatment, who was referred here for treatment of left main disease. About two months ago, uh, he was admitted with chest pain, uh, for uh, and actually had a non-STEMI. So let's go ahead and he's a diabetic, hypertension, and is also hyperlipidemic. Uh, he was uh, advised to have bypass surgery, but he refused to have bypass surgery and hence uh, this in intervention. But we can debate uh, even otherwise if this would be a reasonable intervention to do, even if he was agreeable for, uh, for, uh, for bypass surgery. I think that's uh, something that the panel can discuss. So uh, can you see this uh, picture? Uh, can you see this uh, caudal view? That yeah. looks heavily calcified. Huh? Well, yes. Uh, the question is, is it calcified or is that an ulcerated plaque? I think it, there's a little bit of uh, calcium in the roof of the left main. Uh, you can see it's a very, uh, if you look at the other views, uh, can you please um, go to the next view? So that's the caudal view. It seems like that the cirque may not be involved. I use the word may. Uh, and it's a very eccentric lesion because the distal left main doesn't look all that bad here and it looked absolutely critical in the other view. Next picture, please. All right. So, uh, uh, I, so we uh, have a plan. Uh, we have a 7-French uh, guiding catheter. Our plan is to wire both the uh, arteries, the LED and the circumflex, uh, to go ahead and act do a dilatation of the distal left main uh, and then see what happens. We would like to ask the panel what they think. Is this a reasonable option? I would also like to add that the right coronary artery is dominant and normal and the ejection yeah. fraction is also normal. Okay, okay wonderful. Thank you, Professor Santos. So who would agree with the strategy or who would have a different way to approach that? 
may I ask you from left to right, my panel. Any any other proposal? Uh, yeah, you know that the left main bifurcation looks kind of calcified to me. I I'd give good thought to rotoblading it first. Okay. All right, that certainly uh, crossed our mind, but we thought we would see what, what would actually happen with the dilatation first, and then reserve atherectomy in the event we actually really need to do so. All if right. The patient would have, if the patient would have accepted, accepted surgery, would you have sent him to surgery? No, he did. Uh, you know, I would make the argument that the syntax score is not very high, certainly less than 32. Uh, so even though this patient is a diabetic, it is not completely unreasonable uh, to, to consider PCI of left main. In fact, the data in diabetics that came out of this institution suggested that the outcomes, especially mortality, was not very different between bypass surgery and, uh, and PCI of left main. So I think uh, uh, informing the patient very well about the, uh, you know, the limitations of data that exist, I think it's not an unreasonable thing to consider PCI of left main. Professor Santoso, what do you think? Yes, I, I completely agree with you. Even though in the guidelines, uh, this can be categorized as 2B uh, level of evidence, uh, 2B and level of evidence is also B for indication for PCI. But again here, uh, the lesion looks uh, uh, relatively simple. Uh, I, I completely agree with uh, Prof. Makar. And, and, and also, uh, the, I've calculated the syntax score. Syntax score is 19 only, so it's uh, very low. So uh, it is a good risk for uh, PCI. And we have the same result. We will, be ha we will have the same result as surgery. I'm sure Dr. So, Professor Taggart would vehemently disagree with that, but I think... Um, he will disagree. Yes. <laughs> okay. He will, so, he, will say we he will say we have a 1A versus a 2B. Yes. All right. So okay. Just, uh, just, uh, just one question. Why not to use imaging in this case? Okay. We finished to show the other case that was uh, less complex in terms of no evidence of calcium. Here you have a calcium. Still some doubts about uh, the ostium of the cirque. Uh, and... Uh, in any case, it's going to, to, to make sure. a possible impact. Okay, so while we were actually waiting for you, we wired the circumflex and the LAD. Uh, what we did was to minimize ischemia uh, while doing IVUS, we dilated the left main into the LAD, uh, also realizing that that would give us some indication as to how the ostium of circumflex would behave. And then we proceeded on to do the IVUS of both the LAD and circumflex. So I'm going to ask... Uh, Dr. Mintz to actually go over the IVUS findings with us. Sure. Yes, that's not, not a bad strategy. So can we show the well. IVUS image? You've got it? You've got it. Okay, so, so we're in the LAD, and just for frame of reference, we're about 30 millimeters distal um, to the ostium and about 20 millimeters distal to the left main carina. And the reason I mention that is that even at this point, you see a lumen area that's, you know, borderline, and a plaque burden of about 75%. So this really does not represent a good landing zone for the distal end of a stent. Now as you go more proximal, you see the diffuseness of the disease process, which is not atypical in diabetics. At this point, no calcification. You will first see um, the diagonal branch come into view in a second. Here, there's a big, large diagonal branch. As is typical, the disease is opposite the carina, but then a large plaque burden proximal. Remember that this is pre-dilated, so we have um, limited ability to assess uh, the most severe portion of the stenosis. Then as we're getting toward the ostium of the LED, which is right here, you see the plaque is very, very eccentric. This is the carina, which is again spared. This is the circumflex. And then as we get more proximal, you see the large plaque burden um, at the distal left main. And then we get toward the ostium. You'll see that the, um, it's about a four plus um, left main. And the disease start, stops just before the ostium. So the next thing we need to do is look at the circumflex quickly. 
Um, the imaging run of the circumflex is a lot shorter. And again, you can see that similar to the case uh, of Maurice's, um, the uh, circumflex is not very diseased. Um, but then th this is um, the secondary branch of the circumflex. And then we'll get to the bifurcation of the distal F main right here. And you, what you see is the circumflex. Circumflex is here, LED is here. We've got a lumen area of just shy of four square millimeters. There's a dissection in the circumflex as well, and you see some calcification. But the other point has to do with the calcification that was seen angiographically, and there really is almost none of any significance by IVIS. There's some deep calcification, but there's none that should impede um, balloon expansion or stent expansion. All right, so uh, we, we think that the circumflex uh, has disease and will have to be dealt. It looked worse after cutting balloon dilatation. So let's go ahead and show that picture, please. Can we show the picture after cutting balloon dilatation uh, to show the ostium of the circumflex? While we do so... Um, any thoughts uh, ab about single stent versus double stent, or does the IVIS convince most people that it's reasonable to go with two stents? I think this is an important question. Should we use one stent and bridge test um, stenting over the circumflex, the ostium, or take as he does? So in any case, the ostium was involved and now seems to be worse compared to the beginning. So I think that the angle is, uh, is, uh, is still very similar to the previous yeah, case. It's, uh, it's better, asking to, for, it's better um, to do it now than after we stand yes, it. Yes, sir. Anybody disagrees or other options? No. Regarding the two yeah. stent or one stent? What is the plan? Is to put two stents or so, one stent now? So our plan is to go ahead and put two stents. Yes, please. I think that's better. And uh, how do you deal with the landing zone of the LAD? Yes, please. Do you plan to be beyond that, what um, Gary outlined yeah. as still diseased? Uh, you know, uh, so we have chosen a long stent. Uh, yes, please. We have a 3.5 by 30 stent going from uh, left main to the LAD. Little test, please. So even in this case, you are not going back to the ostium of the left main? Uh, we are not. The ostium of the left main was pretty large, almost 4.5. We, we would like to come back a little bit more, but we think that we can spare the ostium. Okay. All right. All right, let's just take a picture. Who would stent the ostium? Right. Anybody of the panel would stent the ostium as well? Normally we are doing. Okay, ready. So our strategy here is to do. I would stent the ostium. So it's the circus too far back. Test, please. Okay. Test, please. I would send the ostium in almost, almost all cases. That's what I do. Test, please. The time, Gary means there are minimal stenosis at both of circumflex. Test, Is it right? Sorry? I'm sorry, Julio? No, somebody was asking about your comment about the minimal stenosis on the circ, but it was not at the ostium. No, it was at the ostium. I think we was at the ostium. Yeah. Okay, let's go up. Okay. So we'll go ahead and... Right at the ostium and pretty focal. But Gary, you felt it was subcritical. It was not yet critical, was it? No, I... Okay. Um, okay, yes. I mean, I think it's very, very borderline. 
I think that bothered me a little yes, bit. It looks yeah, like there's a dissection yeah. of the ostium and the circumflex. No, 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 that no, sort no, no. of you, made me a little up. bit nervous. You didn't see it because nervous. it was not pacified. So let's not inflate the other one right now. So, uh, but you, you agree it's not a stupid idea to also stent the circumflex? Oh, not at all. Just please, just please. In fact, uh, we, we discussed this with Gary. He thought it was borderline and it was probably uh, a very reasonable thing to do. Uh, so we, we went up already. So just go up again a little bit more so that we really get the ostium. So just pull the balloon back a little bit so we can really get the ostium. Yeah, down please. Okay. All right, so we still will have room to uh, position the LED back if you want to pull back, if you're not happy. But so one, uh, Gary, I wanted to have some uh, comments. You show that, that there was a huge plaque burden in the LED, but uh, the vessel was not uh, truly small. The vessel was quite big. From Andrew, it seems that you have a big difference between the left main and the proximal part of the LED, much less in Ibus. Is that true? That's true. Um, yes, that's true. I mean, I'll, I'll pull it up if you want. Here's the, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but the, where we started in the LED had a very heavy plaque burden with the luminary much less than the ostium of the left main. Only roughly by diameter half. Just. Just to make sure that. Uh, yeah. Don't know if that answers All your about question. The size of uh, not the, the not so far well, okay, you I know, think that we are okay going by it's probably yeah. about a fair three millimeter okay. stent. Okay. While the um, okay. ostium of the uh, circumflex yes, is close to four and a half, so there is a fair mismatch. The only reason right, I'm go, hesitating yeah. a little bit yeah. is that we never got to where I would consider a decent distal landing I zone. So it's possible a little more distal in the uh, LED that's, that's would enough. have had a, um, um, yeah, would have looked the LED. not as um, disease and therefore okay. better matched yes, to the left main. But you know, you, do, you get what you, you take, what you have, and you work okay. with what you have, and you realize so that you probably are going to have to put a second LED stent uh, into the LED just to lead to the first stent. Which it won't come out anyways now. Okay. So, what, what size of stent was that from the left main to the LED, and what was your pressure? So, we used a 3.5 by 30, and we just went up to only 10 atmospheres for fear of. Uh, uh, hurting the distal LED or, or the distal part part uh, of the lesion. Three five. That's correct. Test, please. Test. All right. So I guess what we have to do is let's take a picture. Can I have another balance wire, please? Okay. All right. Yeah. So the first thing we'll do is take a four balloon, dilate the distal left main, recross into the circumflex, and do a kissing. So, can we get a four balloon, please? Four by twelve is good. Now we have a shot on the AP cranial to see 15, the exit okay. of the stent. Four yes. Uh, if you don't mind. Certainly. We'll. Uh, we'll give you that. We were thinking about focusing. And the other comments is on uh, the first uh, diagonal that, as we mentioned, is quite big. Covering that ostium. Are you ready? They want a picture, so let's just. I would have covered it. Check, please. Okay. Okay, so let's take a 4 0 balloon and uh, dilate the distal left main. 4015. It's a 4015. Question to Gary, please. Sure. Go ahead. Uh, does yes, the please. proximal yes. segment of the left man was normal by Ibis? Yes. It is pretty normal. Completely? Not 100%. Just, uh, 
you know, a, a, mod, a really minimal plaque burden. All right, let's just go up. Because now the angiogram shows some osteal problem, but I, I, I wonder, up. is it a spasm or something else? We'll, we'll take a look at it again. Um, I think it may be the way the guide catheter is sitting. What is the nominal? 12. Yeah, let's go to 12, please. All right. Down. All right. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's take a little, little test, please. Okay. Can I get a balance wire, please? Uh, do we cross? Okay. Want, uh, yeah. uh, spider. Okay. Spider. Let's go to portal. Take another shot. Did you pull pull on the? the circumflex wire a little bit to yes. check if, it, if it's, yes, you did. Yes. Oh, so you're, you're confident to get it out? Uh, yes. I didn't feel any significant uh, resistance. So your strategy now is to rewire the circ? That's correct, to rewire the circ and then, and then do a kissing balloon. Kissing balloon. Yes. And what size of balloons are you Well, uh, we, we have a 3.5 stent in the LED and um, 3.0 in the circumflex. So we could uh, go ahead and take 3.0. type of wire is you using hydrophilic coating? It's a BMW, well, isn't it? This is the BMW. I typically yeah. use a balance. But I think, do you have a Fielder XT? Please have, his, have it ready in case we... XT is ready. Would you, uh, if this doesn't go, would you select a, a pilot wire, for example? Yeah, I think uh, what I like to do is try the Fielder XT first, and the that doesn't work. Field, Fielder XT is very delicate, the tip. What is the favorite way of the panel to I read? Use I Hydrophilic wire. Hydrophilic, like a pilot 50? Yes. Yeah. It's easy to slip into the strut. How about you? I like the uh, slippery, like the PT2 or the, uh, yeah, PT2 or the hydrophilic coated yeah. uh, Karimo wire. Can you get me a field of extra, please? Okay. Uh, I, I don't use uh, a lot. A lot thick. Most of the panel uh, have a tendency to use hydrophilic wires in that circumstance. Uh, I have different opinion. Uh, if I may uh, give my own my opinion, I never use a hydrophilic uh, wire because uh, in my practice I normally use uh, DK cross technique for publication stenting. If we have to use two stent, uh, we have to apply two stent strategy. In this particular case, uh, Dr. Makar used a micro mini uh, micro crush technique. So. The, the part of the circ stand protruding into the left main is very, very minimal. But yeah. uh, in my uh, own practice, day-to-day -day practice, I normally use for 
application sending DK cross. And with DK cross, I never use hydrophilic uh, wire because quite often we have to gel this, the wire in the side pens. In that case, uh, the circ normally. So I don't want to pull the wire out and then peel the coating out. So normally, no, if we do uh, enough uh, pre dilatation in the main vessel, for example, in the uh, left main like this, we have the opening in the, uh, in the uh, struts and the cell struts. And also, uh, if we have uh, enough op uh, to appropriate uh, dilatation in the circ ostium with the balloon, stand balloon, we can also have a big opening in the uh, circ ostium. So normally, we, we never encounter a lot of problem in negotiating the circ, even though we have to cross three layers of uh, I am surprised. It's, uh, I didn't think it was going to be that hard to cross this. Maybe the bend is too much. Yeah. And this is a, a fielder XT. Yeah, this is a fielder XT. So, Sorry. yeah, so this went through. Where is our circ wire? This is our circ yeah. wire, right? Yeah. All right. That's the LED wire. Yeah. Okay, so the circ wire behind the stent is pressed, please. Is out. Let's go into a bottle view. Yes, please. Wait a minute. So I feel some resistance, which makes me a little bit suspicious that this may be behind the, the stent strut. Yeah. Yes. Test, please. Yeah. Do, do, do you feel do you some see, friction? Yes, moving in fact, the wire? If, you, if you see uh, what happens to the guiding catheter, when I push it, uh, maybe it's all right. Test, please. Yeah. We'll nonetheless see how the balloon tracks over yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. give yeah. us yeah. a. Yeah. Test second. Test second. We have okay. If we have trouble, we'll go back. <laughs> maybe I was the left main, or post dilated more. I can just um, give me a little test, please. All right. All right, that's okay. Let's just try the balloon. So give us a 3 o by 12 balloon, new balloon. The stand balloon. Stand. No, 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 no. New, balloon. New, new balloon. New balloon to post new. to see if it'll go through the stand struts. Mm -hmm. yeah. And let's have a 325 by 15 balloon for the left main LED. Manipulating the, the second wire, do you feel some friction? I have, I do feel a little friction. Uh, but I am not uh, sure whether this is behind the strut or through the strut. Which, which balloon? The 1.5 or? No, no. Uh, you want to start with smaller balloon? Yes, straight, straight with three yeah. Three yeah. Uh, I want, I want to use a 3 o to see because if a 3 o goes easily, yeah. then then we know that we might be in, in good shape. Two, then we can try the small. Three o for the circ or for the LED? For the circ. Oh, sorry. I need to take out the wire loader. The downside with the Fielder XT is that the shaft is a little bit soft. So the support is less than with a, with a regular BMW. So as suspected, yeah. this may be behind. OK, so that's, at least we know that this is not uh, through the struts. So I'm going to take out the balloon, and we'll reattempt. You want spider? Mm -hmm. Spider. What do you want to do? You want spider. The spider, OK, that's spider. right. Okay. Would you could 
try is to use that as an over-the-wire um, balloon and so that you see immediately if you're um, through the struts or beneath. So this feels a little different. Looks more favorable, yeah, the angle. Test, please. Balloon. All right, let's take the three-year balloon, please. The new what is very important for those who are not used to the Fielder XT, it, you should not knuckle the Fielder XT into a small, tiny side branch and try to push it. You could rupture small vessels Which? and get a tampon out. Well, the, rain, the lumen area was about three. Black burden was large. But they, they did it after they pre-dilated and I actually think that they... That they Damage the osseum of the circumflex because there was a dissection right at the osseum of the circumflex. All right, so we are having trouble even with this. I think smaller balloon may be better. Okay, let's try a one two five metronic balloon. So destiny is, yeah, three dilated with a smaller balloon. Sorry? Yeah. I think uh, this is a very good practice uh, by Dr. Marklar that uh, he never tried to push the balloon too, too much, too hard to, the, to cross the, uh, the two layers of three layers of sand in the cirque ostium because otherwise we'll get indentations or deformations of the sand over there and then this will cause uh, uh, resonances later on. So it's better to pre-dilate with small balloon and then go with the bigger balloon. And we also have to pay attention to the tip of the FC, the Fidra XT. Do you see the balloon somewhere? No, I don't. No. Is it out or no? Can you go into a different view? Maybe. Look at this, um, oh, we sorry, wow. a mistake. We put it on the LED wire. Oh. Okay. Can you walk this out, please? All right. So we have. Two more, two, three more minutes All to right. watch you. Let's see, don't, we'll... Don't get pushed too much. No, no. It's a very interesting and difficult situation, we know. Stay cool. We will continue to work and we can always show you the results later. Yeah, yeah. Can I still work better for over there? Hmm? For kissing? Uh, I can introduce the photo here, yeah, just a second. Let's see, I, if this crosses, then I want to take a 30 and 325. Yeah, okay. watch the tip of your XT. But there's some staining. Mm -hmm. So this is a uh, 1.5 balloon, or what is the size? Still 30. No, no, this uh, is Still the 30. No, yeah. 1.5. I so, think we have to use it yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, so I think what we'll do is the following. We'll go back, we'll dilate the... Should we do an IVIS of the um, left main LED stand to understand what's going on? Perhaps redilate this. Okay, I think we, we have to leave you at that point. The, the session is all be closed. Um, as long as we see you, we still stay with you, but if they shut off, we are away. Okay. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. And really, right. congratulations for what you have achieved so far. All right. Okay. Should we do an IVIS of the left main? Element?